casting the ultimate weapon, the GOES Bad Drone. Unmanned aircraft, often known as drones, are planes that are flown without a crew or passengers. Instead, these planes are controlled from a remote location using a radio transmitter or Wi-Fi. The United States and Britain worked together during the First World War to develop drones, which became a vital aspect of military warfare in Vietnam mostly for the purpose of conducting surveillance. However, the use of this aircraft remains contentious. Foreigners have been increasingly deployed as a spy in the sky keeping an eye on the ground below. But proponents of this technology insist drones are essential to track the operations of terrorist organizations in remote places and in some cases take out enemies from a safe distance. This peculiar-looking drone is one of the most important in the U.S. military. Foreigners have been increasingly deployed as spy in the sky, keeping an eye on the ground below. In this video, the testing of the stealth drone will be showcased. How will it help the U.S. military defend the country? Find out in this video before we reveal. Be sure to like and subscribe to this channel. The United States Air Force is getting ready to begin testing a combat drone made by Boeing, called the MQ-28 Ghost Bat. This unmanned aerial vehicle or UAV was originally designed for the Australian Air Force, but it may also be useful for the U.S. Air Force in learning how to operate unmanned aircraft alongside manned aircraft. During an interview with Breaking Defense in September 20, Lieutenant General Clint Hynode, who is in charge of Air Force Futures, stated that the service is getting ready to take delivery of a drone prototype that is being developed by Research and Engineering Office of the Department of Defense, also known as OSD or RNE. It could look like a lot like an Australian thing. He equipped a Lou Dame Ghost Bat, which made its maiden flight in 2021 at the Royal Australian Air Force Base Woomera in Australia. The involvement of the Research and Engineering Office in the development and experimentation efforts involving Ghost Bat was confirmed by a spokesman for Pentagon named Lieutenant Commander Tim Gorman. Gorman stated that the Office of the Secretary of Defense, OSD, R&E, continuously works with services to validate technologies that are key to advancing and fielding next-generation capabilities. He refused to provide any further information, but he did confirm that the Rapid Defense Experimentation Reserve, or RDER, an effort led by the Office of the Secretary of Defense for Research and Engineering, in which the services propose experiments and compete for funding, is not funding the Ghost Bat program. Boeing has decided to wait for the Air Force to comment on the situation. In recent weeks, Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall has made hints that the Ghost Bat could be a helpful tool for the United States Air Force as it seeks to understand how semi-autonomous combat drones, which the service refers to as collaborative combat aircraft, could interface with the service's fifth and sixth generation fighters. The U.S. Air Force is currently seeking to understand how semi-autonomous combat drones could interface with the service's fifth and sixth generation fighters. The CCA, a manned sixth generation fighter, are both slated to be a component of the next generation air dominance family of systems for the military. And Candle has stated that a CCA competition may begin as early as fiscal year 2024. Kendall stated that he had discussed the utilization of the MQ-28 as a risk reduction mechanism with his Australian colleagues while he was on trip to Australia in the month of August. A few weeks later at the Defense News Conference, Kendall mentioned Ghost Bat once more as a potential task bed that could help prove how to integrate combat drones in the day-to-day -day operations of a fighter wing, such as commission planning, battle management, and sustainment. Kendall's comments came after he had previously mentioned Ghost Bat as a potential test bed at the Defense News Conference. You'd be integrating these drones with existing aircraft in a way which sort of proves out of the tactic, techniques, and procedures, as well as things like maintenance concepts and organizational structures, he said back then. You'd be doing in a way which sort of proves out some of the tactics techniques and procedures. 
One of Kendall's top seven operational imperatives said that will shape the Air Force budget for the fiscal year 2024 as defining the NGAD family of systems. This operational imperative includes determining the precise mix of drones that a human pilot of a sixth-generation fighter aircraft will need to take into battle. During his conversation with Breaking Defense, Aino reiterated that the Air Force has not made a final decision on which drones it will ultimately procure as part of the CCA program. He also mentioned that the Air Force Research Laboratory, the Navy OSD R&E, all have ongoing efforts for testing new drones. He stated that we are attempting to learn of these prototypes in order to gain some of the data we want. This will assist us in comprehending what the actual purchase would look like. And I believe that the true buy is actually a family of drones and that family might be comprised of various manufacturers and multiple designs. I know it expressed some concern that the first MQ-28 Ghost Bat may not be matured enough to be deployed in combat just yet. The first one is a real stinker. Just have it in the back of your mind at all times. He stated the first article of everything that we purchase is not what we truly desire. However, because CCAs are so unique, the Air Force may gain a lot by understanding how to use the system while the technology is still developing. I don't know yet how fast you can take one off the runway, put cars in it, put weapons in it if that's what you want to do, install a new cartridge or a new software update, said High Note. I don't know yet how fast you can take one way off the runway. Even the most fundamental maintenance procedures might be different for piloted fighters and CCAs. Are you required to perform an oil check? When we fly a jet at the moment, we extract approximately that much oil from it, and then we examine it to see whether or not it contains any particles. I seriously doubt that you are going to do it using a drone. According to Richard Obelafia, an aviation expert working at Aerodynamic Advisory, the most important questions that will determine the criteria for participation in the CCA program is how effective is artificial intelligence in reality? If your AI doesn't meet expectation, then you're looking at larger loyal wingman jets with a 2 to 1 ratio or 1 to 1 ratio to manned fighters. You are told. If AI advances more quickly, then you'll be dealing with more compact systems that work together. Explain that, to put it in another way, the more reliable and advanced an artificial intelligence system is, the greater the number of drones that a single human pilot will be able to control. According to Abulafia, however, there are a lot of technological and operational issues. How will CCAs be deployed throughout the combat? And how far away from manned fighters can they get before being considered a threat? Will it be necessary for the unmanned aerial vehicles or drones to remain within visual range of the manned aircraft in order for stealthy data links to continue to function properly? Will CCA operate inside the visual ranges of aircraft that are in position to it? And even if AI were to improve to the point where a single fighter pilot could control a vast swarm of several small drones, what use would it be if drones themselves were so small that they couldn't carry the weaponry or sensors that are now in use? According to Abu Lafia, it is entirely unwritten at this point, and he went on to say that the Air Force needed a brutally honest AI technology roadmap in order to assist in the development of the CCA program. Because the Ghost Bat was initially a part of AFRL's Kyborg program, the Air Force suddenly unexpected interest in reviewing the MQ-28 is excellent news for Boeing. He was eventually forced to withdraw due to schedule conflicts, as Ghost Bat prototypes were engaged in demonstration with the Royal Australian Air Force and could not be transferred to the United States in time. As stated by Brigadier General Dale White, the Air Force Program Executive for Fighters and Advanced Aircraft in August. The Air Force Program Executive for Fighters and Advanced Aircraft said this. The Skyberg Initiative intends to conduct a number of fly tests using a low-cost drone that are equipped with an autonomous core that is owned by the government. The demonstrations using the Kratos UTA P-22 Mako and the Axio 58A Valkyrie, as well as the General Atomics MQ-20 Avenger, are continuing happening at this time. That's the end of the video. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy it. If you did. 
be subscribed to this channel so that you don't miss any of our next videos. See you in the next one.